name is Eric Peterson, and I am 33 years old. My name is Ashley, and I'm 32 years old. When we first got together, we wanted to get married. We wanted to have a family. I had been preparing to join the military since high school. I wanted to serve my country. In 2008, I left for my first deployment, which was in Afghanistan, with the Illinois Army National Guard. When I came home after my first tour, I had a pretty rough time adjusting to life as a civilian. I was experiencing a lot of anxiety and depression, so I decided to return back to the Middle East five more times. As a private military contractor, I was running from something. I couldn't really put my finger on it. I didn't want to have children and them to see their dad and only know him through a computer screen. I would remind him, like, hey, this is what we wanted in the beginning. Do you still want these things? Because I still do. That's why I'm still here waiting for you. I was working full time and I still needed my partner there to help me. If he didn't come home, I wouldn't have been able to stay with him. It was a combination of Ashley, my daughter, and a friend of mine killing himself. Like, those three things really made me focus and say, do I want to continue to live this way? Or do I want to try to figure out, confront whatever it is that I'm running from? Eric and his wife, Ashley, join me now from Mantino, Illinois. Thank you both for joining us. First of all, Eric, thank you for your service. And Ashley, thank you for being at his side through those years and those tours. I got to tell you, I don't know of a more gut-wrenching crossroad, Eric, serving your country for keeping all of us safe or your family. Yes, and thank you again. It, it was a very difficult place I found myself in. Um, but again, if I didn't have the support system that I have in my own home with my wife and best friend and my family, friends, and the community that I live in, you know, it would have made it a much more difficult decision. So I'm very glad yeah. that, uh, that I was brought to that point. You know, you talk so much about being in the military, being part of your identity. You know, I, my dad was in the military. I've been in the airport and you see the men and women walking down, you know, returning off a flight and you say, thank you for your service. And, and I, I get that, that admiration and the identity that comes along with wearing that uniform, which means so much, and it is your identity. That's a weight. Um, wow, that's, that's a weight. Yeah, it can be difficult for sure. I mean, I only compare things to my common experience in uh, deploying overseas. You know, you have that identity as who you are overseas, what your job is, your day-to-day, -day, and you become very proficient at it. And it's great while you're there, but sometimes those those skills may not always, uh, you know, transfer over as well as one would think mm -hmm. here into the civilian world. I do believe that they can, mm -hmm. um, but a lot of times, at least as far as myself, I had a really hard time figuring out how to bring those skills here and right. what I could be good at. Ashley, after Eric's sixth deployment, he came home, he took other jobs out of town. When you hear him say he was running from something, you know, it's, you think to yourself, or did you think to yourself, is he running from us? Is he running from the opportunity to finally sit here with me and wake up and have breakfast together and lunch and watch a movie and have a baby? Is he running from this great life we could have? Yeah, I mean, there were times where I felt that he was possibly running from our future. Um, but in the back of my mind, I knew how difficult it was for him to, you know, to be home and to be around everyday life that I'm used to. When you, when he was at the crossroad, did you try to push him to, listen, you've got to make a decision. We have an infant here. I'm doing it myself in so many ways. And you were because he's on tour and I mean, he's not on tour in concert. That sounds terrible. You're on, you're on tour of duty serving the country. He's not in a boy band on the road, but you're holding it down. And I'm sure it's frustrating. It was pretty frustrating, um, mostly because at the time he was mostly on the road a lot and we never really knew what his schedule was going to be like um, or what time he was going to be able to come home. Uh, so that that part was kind of difficult and that's why i think it was more eric because me i was more supporting what he wanted right. to do but i knew deep down he was going to make the right decision ashley mm -hmm. you know many times when we're at a personal crossroads we can lean in on our own thoughts and make the decision in eric's case you basically gave him an ultimatum you pushed him to 
Pick, pick left, pick right, but you can't have both. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. I told him that, you know, this, this lifestyle is not for me. This isn't what I wanted. And I knew when we first got together that that's not what he wanted either. Mm. So I had to continue to keep reminding him of When that. you say this lifestyle, how, that, that doesn't mean the military lifestyle. It was not being present at home. Exactly. And I'm sure a lot of uh, people who are married to folks who are police officers or firefighters, when that occupation puts you in danger as well, it's like, I want you to be able to come home to be with mm -hmm. the family. Eric, that ultimatum combined with your own personal thoughts at that crossroads did lead you to the work that you do now, helping military men and women readjust to civilian life. We actually have a tape from someone who, who you helped. It's called, the project was called Project head, space, and timing. It helps vets adjust to life after service. And we talk with someone, here's what they had to say. My name is Michael Totten. I'm an Iraqi war veteran. I returned home to get the normal nine to five job. And that's when I kind of started kind of spiraling. Things got a little tougher, started dealing with depression, suicidal thoughts, and just at PTSD. And I was going to take my own life. So I actually met Eric uh, while we were working both with the Department of State in Baghdad. Eric was working with me and helping trying to find like a, you know, a facility, like a place to go get some care. He says he didn't do anything and I did all the heavy lifting. I'm like, you know, it's just you doing all that everything did means the world to me. That was your crossroad. It led you to this work. How does it feel when you hear people like Mike after all you went through to get to your point? You know, I don't think there are really any words that can, that can accurately describe what that means. Kind of like I talked about um, earlier, you know, the whole reason why we came to this, why I came to the crossroads and realized I had to make a decision was because a friend of mine that I was a teammate and a medic to had killed himself. Mm -hmm. And even though he wasn't the first or last to do it, it was the one that resonated with me the most because of how positive he was and it affected me on such a profound level, I wanted to do whatever it took to keep anyone else from experiencing that pain again. So to hear to hear Mike say things okay. like that, to hear any other veteran uh, thank me for anything I've ever done, I mean, there are no words. It feels, it feels that incredible. It's beautiful because we often think of the crossroad as something that will benefit us. And in the end, this so beautifully and wonderfully benefits other people who need you. Thank you both for joining us today. I really appreciate you joining us.